Hey everyone, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. I wanted to start a new series where I talk about all my favorite heavy bands and uh, all the reasons why they're my favorites. And I wanted to start off with Testament because when I first started to play guitar, they were one of the first bands that I listened to and really got into on the heavy side of things. When I was a kid, I listened to Kiss and then I got into Metallica when I got a little bit older, Megadeth, and then Testament. Not only did Testament influence my taste in heavy music, but their lead guitarist, Alex Skolnick, is still one of my guitar heroes to this day, and I'm still trying to figure out what he does in some of these solos. So the first reason why I think Testament slays is that if there was a big five, you know how there's a big four, Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, and Slayer, if there were a big five, I believe Testament should be that fifth band. There's a lot of arguments, a lot of discussions about it. A lot of people say, no man, it should be Exodus. Some other people say other bands, but I would have to say it's Testament, at least in my world. I just see them as one of the giants, one of the heavy hitters in the world of metal, thrash metal from back in the day. The band has been around for almost 40 years now, 39 to be exact. When they started off, they were called Legacy. And then uh, some hotel house band had that name, so they had to change their name to Testament, which I think is a cooler name. And then they went on to actually make an album and a song called The Legacy. So it all worked out in the end. Eric Peterson has actually been in the band since the inception. And then Chuck Billy joined, I think, three years in. So he's been uh, in the band the second longest. So it's so incredible in my mind for someone to be in the music scene for that long. They really blasted on the scene as far as their first album goes under the name Testament uh, with the song Over the Wall from the album called The Legacy. And they did not hold back, man. They just kick right in. They have the thrash sound right off the bat, uh, that thrash beat that they're known for, and uh, this riff. <laughs> Uh, it just gets me so excited to play that beat. Anyway, let's talk about Chuck Billy a little bit. Uh, he's such a great frontman, really cool looking guy. He just kind of towers over everybody, huge hair, big voice. Uh, when he sings, he can go super low, like if you've ever heard the album Demonic. He's basically doing death metal vocals. He can do that, but he can also do his patented shouting style. And then he could sing. I mean, when they do ballads, he kicks into a singing voice. And then uh, really early on, you could hear him actually doing some high Judas Priest-like screams. So quite a dynamic range for a guy named Chuck Billy. And by the way, he's so cool, he has two first names. Chuck actually battled cancer back in 2001 and defeated it. Something called germ cell seminoma. And uh, he came back strong and he's been going ever since. I think he was out just for a few years from what I read. So uh, for someone to overcome cancer, come back and be able to front a band like Testament's pretty badass. I saw them live in 2017 at First Avenue in Minneapolis. And uh, I was so excited because Alex Skolnick was back in the band, once again, one of my guitar idols. So it was great to see him up close. Uh, it's not a tiny place, but uh, it's a little more intimate than if I were to see them in some kind of arena or something like that. So it was really cool to see him in that setting, but I remember going to the bathroom, walking up the stairs to go to the bathroom, and looking back and just taking in the power of the band. I mean, it felt like the walls were shaking, like an earthquake was going the entire time they were playing. And I believe it was one of their newer songs, so I wasn't too familiar with it, but there's a middle part where the band is just sounding so heavy and drudgy and sludgy. And I recall Chuck Billy just sort of taking it all in like I was. He just sort of put his hand on his lap and smiled and looked down and shook his head like, I can't believe how intense all this is, you know? So that was cool to see. Alex Skolnick and Eric Peterson have this great way of playing off each other. And then on this particular song, they do this cool diminished run together, harmonizing. And I always thought it sounded really cool. It's a fun warm-up exercise, actually. It goes something like this. <laughs> I don't have an Eric Peterson here with me to play along with, so I just had to add the other guitar in post-production. Alex Skolnick actually quit the band for a while, like I was talking about, to pursue other musical interests, and he actually is a very proficient jazz guitar player. <laughs> Also, he learned from one of my other idols, Joe Satriani, who also taught guys like Steve Vai and Kirk Hammett. So yeah, that's quite a lineup of guitar players right there, all under the tutelage of Satch himself. So my favorite album is Practice What You Preach. That was the first one I bought after I saw the uh, video for the ballad. I was like, I gotta get to know these guys better. So I bought that album. 
and I recall the bass sounding really funny to me. I think it's because the guitar tones are so huge that they take up, they kind of swallow up all the frequencies. So the bass ends up having to shrink to fit into the mix. So if you listen carefully, it kind of sounds like a rubber band or something. <laughs> If you've ever taken a rubber band and stuck it in your teeth and stretched it and flicked it with your finger, it's got that same sort of sound. It's really strange. It's still very uh, effective in the mix, but I don't think it was until Souls of Black came out that I really thought Greg's bass tone finally was justifying his playing. Much like Steven Tyler and Jonathan Davis, Chuck Billy has his own signature mic stand. And what it is, it's part of a stand that's connected to the microphone and he just holds it. It's kind of cool looking. He's just giant guy with this little mic stand singing. And then the best part of it is during guitar solos or any musical breaks, he actually kicks into some air guitar and pretends to play along, which if I were a singer, I think I'd want to do that too, because I would not know what to do with my hands otherwise. One thing that really caught my ear in the early years were their group chants. So uh, you hear this in other bands, Anthrax does it sometimes. No way, also bands like Biohazard. But Testament did it so much in the early days that it became part of their sound and it's so powerful, especially live when they all start doing the group chants together. Here are some examples spliced together. Some of you might relate to this. I used to try to draw all my favorite band's logos on my folders uh, and my book covers when I went to school back in the day. And one that was really challenging was Testament's logo. I always thought it was a killer logo. It was a little bit derivative of Metallica, if you really look at it, but a lot of people say that, but it's so symmetrical and perfect, the way the A sits in the middle and the two T's at the end, that I think it's one of the most killer logos out there. Later, they went on to break apart the letters, which I thought was a mistake. It didn't look as badass as when it's all joined together. So uh, to me, that's the logo for Testament. When I looked at their discography, I was surprised at how often they released albums back in the day. So I believe the first four albums were released one year after the next, which is incredible to do. And then the two after that came out every two years. So that is some serious output for anybody except for maybe Buckethead or something. Now even though Testament's known for being extremely heavy, they balance that perfectly, especially early on, by doing a lot of chorusy clean sounds that had sort of a classical eeriness to them. I love a band with that much of a dynamic range. So here's an example, something like... <laughs> Great composing with that. And then Alex Skolnick would solo over the top of it and uh, I would make it twice as cool. I already mentioned Souls of Black a little bit, but uh, I love a band that's not afraid to let the bass players shine once in a while. There are a lot of examples of this, but I love Souls of Black so much. I remember when that video came out and my whole band back in the day, my old teenage metal band, all sat around and watched the video. And I uh, just love this intro. <laughs> These guys were not afraid to write a killer ballad either. Uh, for a band that plays such heavy music 90% of the time, uh, you'd suddenly hear a song called The Ballad or The Legacy or Return to Serenity. And you're like, man, these guys could do everything. Speaking of ballads, Alex Skolnick, known for his shredding on his electric guitar, would pick up an acoustic once in a while. Like I said, my first introduction to Testament was The Ballad. The actual video for The Ballad was on MTV. And the beginning shows him playing an acoustic guitar. And I had an old acoustic just sitting around that I was neglecting and it made me pick it up and actually play it. So I'm very grateful to Alex Skolnick and Testament for influencing me to do that. So I remember trying to play this a lot. Also, the leads are very flamenco-like and it really strengthened my fretting hand back in the day. Back in the early 90s when grunge took over, a lot of metal bands were kind of challenged by their record labels to change and alter their music to fit the alternative scene a little bit more. I know my band personally went through that and it kind of tore us apart a little bit because we weren't really sure what to do. But Testament always stayed true to metal. I believe I read that the record company asked them to put out an alternative metal album and instead they put out the album Low. 
which is one of their heaviest albums to date. So look back at the time frame here. We have 92, I believe, and 94. And uh, that's really when the alternative grunge scene was gigantic. And Testament put out The Ritual and then Low. So for them to have that sort of tenacity to not alter their sound and in fact get even heavier during that time period says a lot about their integrity as a metal band. One of my favorite things about Metallica is that they're not afraid to put out an instrumental once in a while. And now uh, those actually became some of my favorite Metallica songs. And same with Testament. All of a sudden you'd be listening to an album and right in the middle all of a sudden they would just throw in an instrumental. I just said instrumental. It's kind of a Freudian slip. An instrumental. And it would take me by surprise because I'm like, this is a nice little break from the rest of the album. And uh, it's cool that a band has the guts to put out an instrumental song. Plus, I believe it gives Chuck Billy a chance to take a breather. You know, he's doing so much intense singing and screaming uh, that it's good once in a while to give that guy a break. I played it earlier, but one of my favorite instrumentals by them is called Musical Death, A Dirge. And that was off the album, The New Order, which I had the tab book for. And I used to take it to my dad's little trailer house in Mora, Minnesota. And I would just sit in a room, completely confine myself in that room and I uh, learned from that and Ozzy Osbourne tribute tab book. And the final reason why I think Testament slays is because of their album covers. Even though their newer albums have more detailed, probably more badass covers, I still go back to their simpler times when Practice What You Preach, I think is probably my favorite album cover. And I also love the New Order cover. I actually had that on a patch that I used to put on my jean jacket. That's what we did back in the day. And so I have great memories of that. Okay, everyone. So I think that was 20 reasons why I think Testament slays. I'm going to be doing all my favorite metal bands in the next few months. I'm very excited about it. So let me know if you've ever seen Testament live. And if you know what I'm talking about when I said the walls were shaking, one of the loudest bands I ever heard live. Or if you just enjoy their music, or maybe you've never really listened to them before and this video will introduce you to them. That would be great. Thank you, Testament, especially Alex Skolnick for influencing me as a guitar player. And uh, I really appreciate it. I wouldn't be who I am today without your music. So once again, thank you. See ya.